Hey everybody, I'm Dan Thorpe from Guitar Domination. I want to welcome you to this video. Today we're talking finger picking exercises. So we've got some really cool little exercises and some powerful tips that are going to help you with your finger picking playing. One of the big issues with finger pickers is that they spend years and years working on their fretting hand, and rightly so, it takes years to develop, but they don't spend nearly as much time on their picking hand. They just want to finger pick straight away, learn a pattern, and think they're just going to be able to do it. But you've got to train the picking hand up like you do with the fretting hand. So let's have a look at some exercises. These exercises are going to help you get better finger independence with a picking hand, which is really important. A lot of people struggle with that. And get better tone, get a more even tone, and have more control. So let's begin. Okay, the first exercise is super simple, and we're doing it all on open strings. It's this. Okay, what are you doing there? It's four on the low E, ring on the high E, middle on the B, index on the G. And you're gonna do that four times. Okay, and then you're gonna do it slightly differently. You're gonna do the low E with the thumb, G with the index, B with the middle, high E with the ring. So essentially the treble strings are doing it going in reverse. So okay. And then what we do is switch back and forth between them. This is a real basic starter exercise. You don't even need to put your left hand on so you can you know give your fretting hand a break if you've been doing some hard stuff like bar chords or legato. Okay. So we're gonna do four of each, and it's like this. Okay, and that's it, that's that simple. There's some important things to watch out for, because when you play this, it's not a case of just going and doing it, you know, running through it, rushing through it. There's details that you gotta look for. That's the whole point of doing these exercises, working on the details. You do something simple and do it really well, work on all the details, and then you apply that to your normal playing, to all your finger picking patterns and your finger picking songs, and it'll all sound better. So that's the whole point. So the details, the things to look out for is, First one, is your tone bright, clear, and loud, or is it quiet and dull and wussy, like this? Okay, you do not want that, you want a nice bright sound. When you're playing guitar, I always say you want a nice bright sound, a confident sound. Imagine somebody's 30 foot away and you're trying to play to them so they can hear. You want that as your standard volume, because believe it or not, once you're able to play with a loud, bright, quality tone, it's easier to be able to back that tone off and go quiet. That's easier to do. It's much, much harder to start off and make um, a, a boring, quiet, dull sound as your standard tone, and then brighten it up when you need it. Okay, it's, it's much better to go with a bright tone and then work backwards, because that's quite easy to do, rather than work with a dull tone and then try and add the brightness later because it requires better technique to play with the brighter tone. So learn the best technique straight away, and then when you want the duller, quieter tone, which has its uses, you know, playing quietly is, is really good at various points, but more often than not, when you're practicing, you want the big, bright sound. Now, a lot of students lack confidence, you know, they're worried somebody in the next room, their husband or the wife are gonna lay into them and tease them if they hear them and they make mistakes, and you know, that's fair enough, so just go in that room, Blast the telly up, full blast, and just say, there you go. Shut all the doors, play, practice in private. And when you practice, practice with some nice bright tone. You know, buy them a bottle of wine, put their best TV program on. You know, ladies Game of Thrones, there you go. There you go, love, you watch that. I'm gonna go play guitar. Just let them do what they want and practice with pure confidence. That's what you wanna do. So, <laughs> okay, just get them drunk, that'll do. <laughs> okay, so basically you wanna play with that nice bright tone, okay. So that's what we're looking for. To get that, see, I notice it feels differently than just doing this. Okay, it means you've got to feel the string a bit more, put a bit more into it. You've got to learn how to stay relaxed while you're trying to get the bright tone. Because fingers as well, and you'll notice this if you play as a quiet tone as your standard tone, um, and then try and add the volume in, you'll notice your fingers tend to clench up and claw up like this. You get the little claw hand. Okay, so 
What we're trying to do is get the fingers relaxed, but the tone bright. Okay, so that's, that's quite loud, and that feels very different to... So you're looking for that bright tone, okay? Keep your fingers relaxed, okay? Stop and wiggle them if you need to in between. Okay, and the, the reason why we're doing it this, this way, then the opposite, is because again it feels different with the muscles. You're working your muscles in a different way. There's lots of little muscles in the hand. We're working them in a different way. It feels very different. For instance, you know, you'll find that you're better at doing it one way than the other. I'm better at doing it this way. Okay, I'm better at doing it that way than I am this way. So for me, what I need to do and what I should do a little bit more of is work this way a little bit more. You know, slowly and more methodically. And everybody has their strong points and weak points. I don't care who you are, the greatest players in the world and beginners do. So that for me is one area I need to just work on a little bit. Those are a couple of things to look out for. Um, you also want to make sure you don't get this scratchy tone, which is quite common. Hear that? And that happens when you're scratching down the strings. People who play in a typical rock position like this, Play, get that scratchy tone a lot more because notice how when I pluck my fingers sliding down the strings just because of the angle of my hand it's almost you know almost parallel whereas this way I'm cutting across the strings a lot more so I'm not scratching down the side of them and what you should be trying to do is turn your hand slightly so you are a bit more 90 degrees so you're not this angle you're at this angle you don't want to come all the way around and overdo it. It's uncomfortable, so you want to get comfortable, but make sure you got that decent angle. Look, I'm, you know, roughly 90 degrees there. That's the ideal angle. So you, you maneuver things to get in that sort of position, but don't try and be ridiculously precise getting the protractor out and everything, okay? You know, you want to get like nice, solid, roughly 90 degrees where it feels comfortable. And just make sure you use a footstool if you want to play in this classical position. The nut is, you know, roughly shoulder level. For some people, they like it even higher, which allows that angle even more. But you've got to play about with what works for you. Just, I always say keep the nut quite high. That's a pretty standard one. If you keep that nut quite high, shoulder level or above, you'll generally be able to get a decent angle. Okay. Last couple of things to look out for there. Okay, um, there's another little exercise I want to go through. Again, this is about finger independence, and this is where we're repeating plucks. So we're going to do this this time. What I'm doing there is one pluck with the thumb, three plucks with the ring finger on the high E, thumb on the low E, three plucks with the B string with the middle finger, thumb, three plucks with the G with the index. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, and now one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and just alternating. So it's basically high E, B, G, B, high E, B, G, B. Okay, that's a good one. It's a challenging one because you're using the same finger over and over. Now when you do normal sort of finger picking stuff, got alternate fingers you don't normally pluck straight after so when you're doing this exercise it's quite challenging because you're working that muscle and then bam you're working it again bam 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 whereas normally you you're letting that muscle relax when you play um, a different string with a different finger in a standard song or finger picking pattern so this is challenging because you're training your muscle to try and pluck relax pluck and then relax quickly and then pluck so you're engaging it and relaxing it so you're really working that muscle in that finger so each finger gets a bit more of a workout um, plus you chain it training each finger to work at the same volume this is something you should be doing all the way throughout this anyway getting the same volume with each finger so I'm not doing this notice that that's awful you know you want to keep it as even as you can with this 
Okay, and that's good practice because there are times that you're going to want to pluck certain strings louder when you're playing a romanza, for instance. You want to pluck the high E louder, you don't want to pluck um, the B and the G louder because it sounds poor. You know, that's not what you want to do, you want to get that high E loud. Compared to the other strings. So that's important, being able to um, play certain strings and certain fingers louder at certain times. But as an exercise, you want to be able to keep it even. And then what that will do is allow you then just to quieten certain strings and fingers at certain points. Remember what I said earlier, it's a lot easier to drop the volume of something than it is to add the volume of something. So if you play all three fingers nice and loud for this exercise, later on in a real exercise, you can practice doing some a bit quieter. Okay, so get them all solid and loud and even first for both exercises, so this one. this one okay and repeat you can alternate you can pair up the two exercises put them together but they're both very powerful later on you can make these a bit more advanced you can play them to a drum beat or a click which I highly recommend I'll go through playing with a click in a future lesson let me know your thoughts on this because it's just a quick lesson a couple of simple exercises that don't take a lot of brain power in terms of you know, you've got to do a complicated pattern which takes an hour to learn, then you've got to try and remember it. You can learn these simple exercises straight away, you can apply them straight away, but it's the details that matter. So just make sure your uh, tempo is even, you're not rushing, your volume is even, so everything's steady. Yeah, your tone is smooth, so there's no scratchiness, there's no dull notes, only when you want the, the quieter dull notes. But Get it right as a standard exercise, so everything smooth, even, and across the board, and then start playing about with the loud and the soft and the accents. But getting the basics right is really important. Keep all this in mind when you're playing a standard finger picker pattern or a song, okay? And try and practice your songs with this mindset. So if you're going to take a simple song, something like Dust in the Wind. You know, you're going to try and take that mindset into it. You're not going to play it like... You're not going to play it like this. Which is just, obviously, I'm exaggerating that. Nobody plays it like that, but you want that nice, bright... So you slow it down if you need to to get that tone and then you speed it up. So tone is everything. It's a really important finger picking. If it doesn't sound good, it isn't good no matter how fancy or how technical or how somebody's preached how important it is. The basics done really well is far more important than the complicated stuff not done very well. And getting a great tone with your finger picking hand is so, so important and so neglected. You never see lessons about this. It's so rare. But those are a couple of exercises that you can do take you a long way if you want to apply them. Just a couple of minutes a day is all that's needed. Remember, you can play them with a click or a drum beat uh, if you want to. You should be trying it with a foot tap, ideally, um, anyway, unless you're really, really new, and then it might be all be a bit too much, but if you can get the foot going with it, great. Okay, and then if you can try it with an external timing device, such as a drum beat or a click, even better. Okay, I'm gonna wrap that up there. So leave a comment, let me know what you think, because I want to post a lot more videos this year, but I want to make sure it's all the videos that you want, so that they're going to be relevant to you, they're going to be useful. And I want you to let me know what you think. Are we going in the right direction for you guys? This is good stuff. So leave a comment and let me know what you've struggled with with your finger picking. Let me know what you find hard, what you want to improve on, what you want to succeed at. Okay. And if you want more advice, don't forget to download my book, How to Travis Pick. Okay, it's a free ebook from my website at guitardomination.net. There's other books there, but obviously that's going to be a really, really good one if you're watching this video and enjoying it. Covers Travis Picking, the fundamentals, which is finger picking. Obviously, Travis Picking is finger picking. It's a type of finger picking with alternate bass, and it sounds great. You know, the, tra the Dust in the Wind one that I just went through, that's a form of Travis Picking. It's a short book. Really easy to get started with. It's a fun book. It's had really good reviews so far and, and all that. So get the book, enjoy it, let me know what you think and leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Dan Thorpe.
guitar domination.net. See you in a video soon. Cheers. Bye bye.